The Azure Vault returns as one of the dungeons for Mythic Plus in Season 4. The dungeon will start with a 36 minute and 30 second timer, so as long as you complete the dungeon within that window, you will upgrade your key. At the start, coming into contact with a Shrieking Whelp will start their Shriek cast. You'll need to repeatedly stun or hard CC this cast so it doesn't go off or it will activate two very powerful mobs, Crystal Furies and Crystal Thrashers. Crystal Furies will target your tank with a Piercing Shard's Frontal. This deals massive upfront nature damage and applies a heavy hitting 10 second dot. Avoid standing in front of this at all costs unless you're the tank. You can also stop this with hard CC to delay its cast. Crystal Thrashers will cast Crystalline Rupture, creating a massive swirly around them. Simply run out from under this or you'll suffer massive damage and it will also root you. Conjured Lashes are another very dangerous mob. They will cast Mystic Vapors which you must stop with Interrupts or other CC, as this applies a party-wide hard-hitting dot that can stack if multiple casts are successful. Finally, before we engage the first boss, we must defeat all three Arcane Tenders. They have a Wild Eruption cast that launches missiles at random players. Simply dodge these swirlies as they also leave behind a patch of infused ground. Do not step in this. The second cast they have is Erratic Growth, which must be interrupted. A successful cast stuns the targeted player for 6 seconds and turns them into a sprout. Note that the stun can be dispelled. Moving on to the first boss, Laymore. The boss will periodically spawn Leyline Sprouts throughout the encounter. These must be destroyed using his other abilities before his consuming stomp. A group white damaging ability that deals huge damage based on how many sprouts are still active. You want to use a defensive for this regardless. Laymore will apply an explosive brand to the whole party, dealing upfront arcane damage, knocking them back and applying a brand that explodes after 6 seconds. This explosion will destroy any sprouts within 15 yards, so your group should spread here to destroy as many sprouts as possible. Tanks can also destroy more sprouts with the boss's erupting fissure frontal, dealing massive arcane damage and knocking back players struck. Tanks try to hit as many sprouts as possible here. Destroying any sprouts will spawn volatile saplings, and tanks should gather these up while your group cleaves them down, and upon death they will leave swirlies that you need to avoid. Finally, tanks should also be aware of infused strike, dealing upfront arcane damage and applying a 10 second dot. After defeating Laymore, we'll head down the stairs. You'll meet multiple Shrieking Whelps here that you'll probably want to avoid. Arcane Elementals will cast Waking Bane. Make sure to interrupt this as it sends a targeted player to sleep, but can also be dispelled. Unstable Curators will cast Forbidden Knowledge. Make sure to sidestep these Swirlies, otherwise you'll take big damage and be disoriented for 4 seconds. They have a Tank Buster in Heavy Tome. This deals big arcane damage and cannot be avoided. Rune Seal Keepers will cast Condensed Frost at the tank. Kick this ability, but you definitely want to save a kick for Icy Bindings. This roots your whole party for 5 seconds and does big frost damage, but can also be dispelled through freedom-like abilities. This Icy Bindings cast, as well as the Waking Bane, can be deadly when paired with the Swirlies. Arcane Constructs will cast an Arcane Bash Frontal on the tank, dealing massive upfront arcane damage and knocking back players struck. Be careful not to get hit off the edge here. You can also outrange this ability once they start casting, and they also cast a Conjured Barrier on themselves, so just burn through their shield. Astral Attendants will cast Unstable Power. Dodge these Swirlies, but note that it can be lethal if paired with the Icy Bindings cast. Vault Guards are deadly tank buster mobs. Make sure to use Mitigation for their Ice Cutter cast as it deals Frost Strike damage. The Guard will also periodically cast Brilliant Scales. Purge this where possible as it gives them a 30% magic resistance. Finally, we encounter the Scalebane Lieutenant. Again, like the Vault Guard, it will cast Ice Cutter, but it also has a deadly tank buster in Spellfrost Breath. Make sure to use big mitigation here. The Lieutenant also boasts a Mage Hunter's Fervor Aura, increasing the damage dealt by nearby enemies by 25%, so make sure to prioritize this mob and don't pull it onto too much trash. Again, this mob will also cast Brilliant Scales. Now we can move on to Azure Blade. This boss has two phases that he rotates between. In the first phase, the boss will periodically cast Summon Draconic Image, your whole group will need to hard swap and focus down the image while kicking the illusionary bolt cast. Once you defeat the image, it will spawn many unstable magic swirlies you need to dodge. Azure Blade will target a random player with Ancient Orb that everybody will need to sidestep. And finally, in this phase, the boss will target the tank with Arcane Cleave. This has a 10 yard frontal range, so tanks make sure to face away from your party with it. Upon reaching 100 energy, Azure Blade will run to the middle of the room and channel overwhelming energy, dealing party-wide damage every 2.5 seconds. During this cast, the boss will also fire out Ancient Orb Fragments you need to dodge at all times. To phase Azure Blade back in, you'll need to kill the 4 Draconic Illusions around the encounter, and we suggest focusing one as a group and moving around together. Upon defeating an Illusion, again it will spawn Swirlies that you need to dodge. 
This phase is a great time to use personal defensives. Now we've defeated Azure Blade, we'll move down the vault. Here we'll encounter Drachnoid Breakers. They will charge a random player with Shoulder Slam, dealing massive physical damage to everybody within 8 yards, and also increasing the physical damage they take by 10%. Note that this charge also ignores line of sight. The Berserkers will also cast Bestial Roar, dealing massive AoE damage to your whole party. No Magic Hornswogs will leap around the room with Null Stomp. Make sure to avoid standing in these swirlies or suffer big arcane damage as well as losing all of your magical buffs. Parasec Looters cast Tear Flesh on the tank, dealing direct physical damage and applying a stackable bleed for 10 seconds. Kite or CC these mobs if you need. Talash Greywing will occasionally cast a Frost Bomb on everybody in your party. After 5 seconds the bomb will explode dealing high frost damage and leaving a patch of frozen ground. Place these patches close together without overlapping and then move around the boss encounter gradually. Throughout the fight, the boss will target a random player with Icy Devastator, dealing high frost damage for 3 seconds to everybody within 8 yards. Players targeted will need to use a defensive here, or abilities like Feign Death or Vanish will stop the channel. Finally, once Talash reaches 100 energy, he'll jump to the middle with his Absolute Zero cast, shielding himself with Glacial Shield and spawning a Vault Rune. All players must run to the active Vault Rune to reduce damage taken by 50%, otherwise Absolute Zero will definitely one-shot you. You may also want to pair up a defensive here. After defeating Talash, we can move straight on to the final boss, Umbral Skull. At 75, 50 and 25% health, the boss will enter a brittle intermission phase. During this phase, the boss will spawn multiple detonating crystals and one hardened crystal. Immediately nuke these crystals down with a focus on the hardened one, as it has a crystallized barrier you must break first as this barrier pulses big AoE damage every second while it's active. Failing to kill these will apply a group-wide fracture dot for 15 seconds that can quickly end in a wipe. Umbral Skull will target a random direction with Crystalline Roar. Dodge this frontal. Arcane Eruption is cast whenever the boss reaches 100 energy. It causes crackling vortexes to spawn around the room, which slowly move towards players that generate healing aggro. Finally, tanks will have to deal with a Dragon Strike mechanic, inflicting massive upfront arcane damage and applying a 10 second arcane dot that needs to be dispelled. But that's it for this boss and that wraps up the Azure Vault in Mythic Plus. If this guide did help you or a friend out then please feel free to drop a like down below and subscribe to your boy. And until next time I'll catch you guys later.